figure out why you want a brand. If you're building a personal brand versus a business brand, you know, a unique skills definitely represents a lot of benefits and recognizing what you can offer and being able to leverage that will help you achieve your goals much faster than if you were a commodity, which makes you very replaceable. People can easily come in and, and duplicate what you already have. But if you can find something that makes you unique, that makes you you and be authentic to yourself, then you'll create a, a long lasting sustainable brand and reputation for yourself. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Today I get to speak with Van Nguyen. Van Nguyen, also known as Van Revival, was earned due to her commitment to resilience and reinvention. She's a brand builder and creative producer at Envisionary Studio and Envisionary Packaging. Biohackers LA co-organizer and VP of membership at the American Marketing Association in Orange County. Empowerment coaching underpins her business building and marketing efforts. Her interests include wellness, social etiquette, business, and growth. Van's first experience with personal branding started during her time as a model for fashion icons. That's when she realized the power of branding. She's passionate about staying genuine in her relationships and can anticipate people's needs, wants, and desires while generating trust and loyalty along the way. Let's learn more from Van Revival. Hey Van, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you, Janaid. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on Hacks and Hobbies. Thank you so much for having me on. I look forward to uh, having our, our chat today. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really amazing how we got connected in the past year and we've been following each other's journeys. Mm -hmm. And it was until we actually had a conversation that we found so many parallels and so many commonalities between our, the way our brain works. <laughs> so yes. I'm really excited to, you know, dig in and, and learn a bit more about Van over here. So let's start from the beginning, start from where you're comfortable with. How did you launch into this entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial <laughs> <It's okay>. journey? <laughs> oh, those moments. <laughs> so many, yes. so many syllables. So yeah, how did you decide to become an entrepreneur and what keeps you motivated to keep on going? I think uh, it was accidental for myself. Mm. Uh, it wasn't something that I was seeking out. I didn't think I would be a good businesswoman or an entrepreneur ever in this lifetime. I was always very much an employee mm. and I was comfortable with having that stable income. <laughs> so <laughs> it came to my own surprise to even see myself 
where I'm at today. Um, I started off working for somebody else and helping them build their team in oral surgery for quite a while. And I've been in that industry for about 10 years, dentistry and oral surgery, and, and realizing that, oh, I, I really do love building teams and making things efficient in the office. Always like went over and beyond um, my my call of duty in at many at many of the jobs I've been at and realized mm. I outgrew them really quickly. <laughs> so like, cause I would, I would, I need that challenge, you know, otherwise I get bored. And then one day my brother's like, I left an oral surgery job because I didn't feel like my, the way I operated really aligned with the team. And so after I left, my brother was like, Hey, why don't you join my company? I need mm. a help. You know, I need help growing my team. And he had been in business since 2019. I'm oh, sorry. Mm. Since he was 19 years old. <laughs> so he went off like right from college, right into becoming an entrepreneur. And he wasn't afraid of those risks. Yeah. And I was like, okay, sure. I'm good at growing teams. I can come in and help you. I didn't know anything about PR or events or any of that, but I did help him connect with a lot of the people that helped him to get to where he is today. So realizing, you know, having that uh, relationship skills really helped me uh, get mm -hmm. ahead in my own career. So I started uh, planning red carpet events for the Kardashians that blocked off all, all of Hollywood at one point, I think it was the famous cupcakes store launch. And then uh, next mm -hmm. thing you know, I was uh, managing events for Forrest Whitaker, helping raising funding for school uh, art programs for to get them back into the schools in yeah. Los Angeles. And there was, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. And then I did my very own first project management role at his company. And we did a big event at the London West Hollywood Hotel. And I, to my surprise, I did an amazing job. People stayed around for four <laughs> hours. And usually it, it, for celebrity gifting suites, people just come, get their swag bag and mm -hmm. they go. But I wanted to create an experience because I realized like, you know, well, food and drinks definitely <laughs> keep people around. So we made yeah. sure to have that component, but also like bringing in people that had talent that could keep people engaged throughout the event. And that, that really helped a lot. So I brought in my friend who does uh, Jin Chen Jiu-Jitsu and people waited around two hours just to have her work on them because her energy oh, wow. was just so amazing. Mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of similar to Reiki, but uh, a little different uh, where she's taught by a Japanese master, the Japanese ancient art of healing uh, through mm -hmm. energy healing. So it's a, uh, yeah, it was interesting to see that that worked out really well. And I thought, okay, well, uh, then I helped him land a $1.2 million deal in the wow. first time in history of his firm. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the relational aspect. The, the girl is a country music artist and she really connected with me. And then my brother was more of the businessman who connected with her father really well. Yeah. And so they wanted to have us come and help her with her country music career. Yeah, it was for a two year contract. And I was really shocked that I had you know, <laughs> help facilitate <laughs> that. And long story short, I guess my brother and I didn't really share the same vision in regards to where we saw the company going and how we sure. wanted to operate. So I ended up launching uh, Message Now, my own PR firm. And it wasn't even my idea. <laughs> it was <just> my <laughs> friends, <laughs> my, my mentors. I had a lot of mentors. I had one that mm -hmm. was a business consultant, Mm. who was a brand strategist and a website designer. And then the other guy is a, uh, a due diligence expert. So he taught me to mitigate risk. And so I had all these different people around me that really taught me, you know, different things uh, when it comes to running a business. And yeah. that was what gave me the courage to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't know where to start. You know, he was like, hey, I already have a brand I'm not using, a logo's already done and the name's there and it'd be perfect for a PR firm. Why don't you go ahead and, and use it? And yeah. 24 hours later, <laughs> I had a business up and running with a full on website and everything. And I didn't mm -hmm. think that was even possible to, to, um, to get a business up and running in 24 hours, but he did it. Yeah. I think it helped that he had an IQ of 164. So, <laughs> and a lot of experience in, in running and yeah. And running a business and being a nice. licensed attorney. So that, that kind of helped a lot. So, yeah, so that was the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey and it was just been a learning experience experience ever since. And then I pivoted to uh, a 360 degree branding services, realizing I'm not just a publicist. I mm. love solving business problems, but I also love creating great brand experiences at every mm. touch point for the consumer. So 
I realized that's the, that's the direction I I'm more passionate about going into. And PR is just a small component of that. Just a small component. I, I yeah. love that story. And I love how you had so many amazing people around you, right? Guiding you, helping you, not letting you feel that it's, it's a lonely, it's a, it's not a lonely, it's not something <laughs> that a lone ranger can do, right? No, it takes a village. Yeah. It, it definitely takes a village. It takes other experts and their, their experience and, and building on top of all that they've gone through. So it's almost like you're taking in a hundred years of experience and, you know, boiling it down <laughs> to what you can do in 24 hours. <laughs> I was like a sponge learning constantly. Mm -hmm. I had to be okay with constructive feedback. It was really, yeah. I took it really hard when I first started. I was like, man, I'm not doing anything right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm better for it. So realizing you got to humble yourself really and, and not Absolutely. think that you know everything so that you can well, keep growing. What's also fascinating is that how your brother invited you, like, hey, you're already doing this amazing thing out here. Can you help me raise a team? Because we don't have enough staff. We, we can't serve enough clients or whatnot. So you, because you had that talent, because you built on that skill and building the relationships, I think that's one of the big things that I see is relationship with human beings it's a really hard thing to do. And if you can master that aspect of dealing with people, everything becomes easy because guess what? We're all human beings. Yeah. So when it comes to marketing, yeah. it's really just relationship and understanding the psychology of people and what drives their behavior. And I think that's how I ended up in marketing because I've <laughs> studied psychology for so long and I'm very mm. fascinated by people. So I love learning about them and what drives yeah. them and what they, you know, what they value and, and being able to add value into their lives. And, um, yeah, he, he was a solopreneur for so long that, mm -hmm. and he hadn't worked with other people <laughs> at other companies to yeah. build, to understand how to build a team and trust and connection and, and, um, motivate them too. Yeah. So a lot of the people he did bring on, they didn't stick around for very long. And uh, they didn't respect him. And it was because mm. he didn't set healthy boundaries, you know, uh, within his company. And I, yes, yeah, so I helped, I think the minute I got on board, I brought in seven people. I helped recruit, train, onboard them. Then I put together a system. So I realized mm. when you have a business, especially when you're scaling, you really need a, a, an efficient system in place oh, yeah. so that you can efficiently collaborate. Otherwise, Oh my gosh, there'd be so many back and forth emails, crazy text messages, and mm -hmm. you're having to track all your projects. And so with anybody I work out, I work with, I always look to see like, what are you, what tools are you using? What do you have in place? And, and if you needed to bring in other people, is it, you know, is it easy for them to collaborate with you? Everything should be easy for them. Yes. Even signing a contract. He used to have people print out the contract, hand sign it, scan it, <laughs> email oh it God. over. I'm like, you do know there's like mm -hmm. DocuSign, Adobe mm -hmm. Sign. <laughs> there's you know, there's been yeah. so many. There's yeah. so many tools out there that have sped up um, how you can, you know, get those documents and agreements signed. And, and those are some of the foundational things, some of the boring stuff that entrepreneurs don't, you know, they, they don't want to think about it because they're the boring things, but we need to do those boring things to Absolutely. make sure that we can scale and that we can keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I think most people don't really have a clear vision of where they want to take their companies. Uh, oftentimes, I mean, you don't need like a 30 page business plan mm -hmm. necessarily, but you do need to have a clear vision. I think like three years ahead of where you're at. Definitely. So. Yeah. I love, I, I like that a lot. And something that I'm building out and looking to set up systems as well. It's It's been a crazy journey. Starting the podcast, I was a lone podcaster, right? Mm -hmm. Talking to myself, editing myself, publishing myself. And for, for some time, it was good. But yeah. then it wasn't because I started interviewing people and I would interview five, six people per week. And mm -hmm. now... All of those recordings started stacking up and I couldn't, 
come around to edit in a and edit them fast enough. And like like you said earlier, right? When when we work on stuff for ourselves, we spend a lot more time. So I ended up spending three, four hours on each episode, and I have forty wow. episodes to edit. To edit, I'm like, okay, this is not sustainable. I need to bring in a team member and trust that they can do the same level of job that I was doing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It definitely takes a team of people uh, to make it sustainable for you, so you don't burn out. I think um, I realized that after burning out <laughs> twice, <laughs> <laughs> that being an entrepreneur is mm-hmm. not. Um, a sprint it's a marathon so yeah. <laughs> I'm like okay yeah. I understand now <laughs> all those late nights I mean a lot of the entrepreneurs I spoke to that are, that are in the millions with their business and um and even they worked 80 hours a week when they mm-hmm. first started for the first couple of years at least the first three years I'm like 80 hours a week wow a normal employee works 40 so then you yeah. think was it really worth launching your own company then <laughs> I mean, are you really creating freedom for yourself mm-hmm. or are you now bound to your, you know, your company because yeah. you can't take time off and, uh, or step away from it. That, that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of interesting where like, I've, I've moved away from using my name as the brand for that very reason. Cause I want other people to be able to step in without me being there. I think Tony Robbins really struggles with that. Mm-hmm. His name is the brand. And so any of his people who train under them, under him, uh, people expect to see him, not his, not his trainees. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. And that's, that's a really good point of, I was, I, I always was attracted to creating a brand, creating a brand, right? So I don't, know if, if, I don't know if you've heard of this. I haven't shared much about my company that I started 20 years ago, Humble Zone, right? There's a mm-hmm. whole story behind it, but I never got around to market it fully because like you said, most people don't know what what the vision is for the future, and I lack the kind of vision. I was like, okay, I can I can bring in, I can these one off jobs, but if I wanted, I really wanted to scale, I would need to have a team. I would need to have processes in place, and that's something that we all learn the hard way, unless mm-hmm. we have mentors who have hundreds of years of experience. <laughs> hundreds of years, <laughs> they're still alive. <laughs> Well, I'm 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 comp- I'm kidding. compounding and you know uh, yeah, um, adding absolutely. the ten different people with ten years of experience each. You know that's that's hundred years of experience. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what what uh, what? How did you come up with the name Humble Zone? I am curious. So Humble Zone was this was 1995. I used to go uh, for kickboxing. Uh, we call the Jeet Kune Do, and this was back in Saudi Arabia. This is before I moved out to California, mm-hmm. and our maxim was something around the line to be humble because you're lear- learning this martial arts, and just because you have the strength to attack, you know, you have to be humble uh, to be able to, you know, fully come in yourself and control yourself and control your emotions. Mm. so humble was something that stuck to me and I was like I want to invite people to the humble zone because here we're we're here to help you know create emotion we, we're here we're here to, I don't even know what what the thought was going to like initially my my screen name on AOL and some messenger this is you know I'm going way back was SJA humble so it was like my initials oh. and then the humble <laughs> And then I came up with like the name Humble Zone. And so since 2001, I've had humblezone.com. Mm-hmm. And that's where I, that's the email address that I use for everything. And there will be a time where I'll start marketing that stuff. But right now I'm just focused on the podcast. And it's been, it's, it's created a really good avenue to, you know, bring my personality and me to the light of, in this new world of don't even know where where this is, but it's, it's been a really good journey. It's an awesome journey so far. Thanks for that question, Gwen. Yeah, no, awesome. I'm glad you, uh, now I understand where that came from. I had no idea. I was like, that is an interesting name, you know, it's an interesting brand name. So mm-hmm. I wanted to know the story behind it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And uh, so you've gone through your journey, you're an employee, you're invited 
to come start a team for your brother and you started seeing the value and the challenge that it brings because you would get bored when you're an employee, right? Right. But as an entrepreneur, there's challenges upon challenges. There's books of challenges that we have to go through. (laughs) So that's probably keeping you motivated every single day. And and you're rebranding your company as well, correct? So take us, yeah, take us through that journey and, and, and how how you decide or how you're, you know, pivoting essentially to create this new company? Well, the Envisionary Studio, so I rebranded Message Now to Envisionary Studio because I like how, you know, when it comes to branding and when it comes to marketing, there's so much creativity that's involved. And Mm. I, being a very feature thinking kind of person, I just thought Envision, you know, the future Mm. and Envisionary Studio just really resonated with me. And I wanted to create something myself. So Message Now wasn't something I built as a brand. And so Mm. I didn't feel like it was mine. I'm like, I need ownership of what I created from scratch. So (laughs) I know it was like a lot of work to start over again. But at the same time, I'm proud of it because I put all my (laughs) love, sweat and tears into it, right? Mm -hmm. Like building everything from scratch from like being involved in the logo process to the creating the mission statement, the vision statement to the whole entire website was the first time I ever built a WordPress site on my Mm -hmm. own without my mentor. So I was really proud of it. I was like, wow, I didn't break it. (laughs) So that was, that was a miracle. And just understanding how there's, I love a lot of those uh, sci-fi films. Uh, They're, they're really interesting and and how things are moving in this like AI direction too. Mm -hmm. Right. So Mm -hmm. I've kind of embedded a lot of that into my branding. So you'll see like space ships and robots nice. <laughs> on my website, <laughs> um, but also very perfect looking people. And, and it's mm. because I, being a perfectionist, not saying like there is such thing as being perfect, but you can strive for perfection as much as you possibly can. Absolutely, and so yeah. even if I'm operating at a seven, it's a nine for someone else who may not be a perfectionist. <laughs> yeah. Um But I I just love that whole, you know, at the end of the day, what we're building towards is our future is it's creating um, a legacy, right? Whether it's for a lot of some people I do talk to, they they are trying to leave a legacy behind for their children or, or their families. And um, that's why my email for Envisionary Studio is feature at envisionarystudio.com because envision your feature, but we'll make that come to life, right? Um, A lot of times it's all about the execution. And I think uh, that's where I'm really good at is being catalyst to help people reach their goals uh, at the, the fastest and smartest route possible, depending on their resources that they have available to them. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I know that. yeah, I just, I mean, I started off like in modeling, not realizing I was branding myself even back mm. then when I was 18, I was like, I don't like my name. Van to me was really boring because four people had the same name in my classroom, like oh, wow. literally first name, last name. I'm like, great. How do I differentiate myself? Then it was my middle name. So my teacher had to call us out by first, middle and last name. And and one other girl had my middle name too. So like, great. So now we had to change it to an alias. So it was Valerie. (laughs) So now everyone at school call me Valerie and my friends still call me that. So they forget. They're like, is this Valerie? Because I'll send them my new contact and I'll say Van. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Van's my real name, but I went by Valerie for so long that it kind of stuck. And Mm. Then when I got into modeling, I'm like, great, Valerie's too common. Now I have to come up with another name. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about reinvention. I've reinvented myself so many times and somehow mm-hmm. it managed to um, to uh, help me manifest my goals. But I looked up uniquenames.com one day and I thought, what's a, what's a good name for myself? <laughs> so <laughs> I looked through a list of names and I'm like, oh, I really like Katani. It's K-I-T-A-N-E. It's a Lenape tribal name and it means big river. Mm-hmm. And I think of all the elements, I'm definitely water and I adapt very quickly and I'm always moving <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. very quickly. So That's I just you. thought, oh, that fits me. I'll go, I'll go with Katani. And I wanted to, for people to remember me on a first name basis, like Madonna or Prince, you know, mm-hmm. because my last name is so complicated. It's like people pronounce Win as Nagayan, Nugin, Win, and then yeah. they don't know how to spell it. So how are they mm-hmm. going to be able to find me? So yeah. I thought, well, 
Katani is good enough. Nobody else out there that I know of in the modeling world is named Katani. So it worked. So then people started referring to me uh, on a first name basis and everyone would know who they're referring to. Mm -hmm. But it got confusing when I mixed my friends together because they're like, oh, you met her during high school years because you call her Valerie. <laughs> and then <laughs> People who met me in the modeling industry call me Katani. And then mm -hmm. it was people at home would call me Van. I'm like, great. This is causing brand Oops. confusion. <laughs> adding, adding so many names. Yeah. <laughs> So then eventually, well, Katani, I would consider my alter ego. And I, mm. I still have to read that book, by the way, The Alter Ego Effect, which I think is interesting, right? Like yeah. it really helps you reinvent yourself in a way that you wouldn't otherwise if you didn't create this character. And it helps you bring out this courageous side of you. I was like the shy introvert, like hardcore. And I was mm -hmm. voted shyest in class in sixth wow. grade. I would walk with my head down. Uh, I spent my lunch and break times reading a book. Like my nose was always in a book. So literally people called me bookworm like in school, in junior high. And then uh, I didn't break out of my shell until like my 20s. Uh, and I was always constantly challenging myself to mm. get out into social situations and follow whatever the book told me to do. So the book said, yeah. okay, today you're going to talk to a stranger at the coffee shop. I will go and talk to a stranger and compliment them. <laughs> And it was so awkward at first, like yeah. just talking to random people. You're like, what do you talk to them about? Mm -hmm. So I think like all that practice really paid off <laughs> over time. But um, the alter ego effect is really effective, I must say, because the mm -hmm. minute I step on stage or I'm at a photo shoot, I Katani is there, not fan. And uh, that, wow. that confident side of me would just come out. It's as if you're playing you're an actor on set and you're playing a role. You have yeah. to be that person yeah. and embody it. And, and that really helped me, you know, fix my posture, the way I felt about myself, my confidence level started soaring. Uh, and I looked at myself very differently, you know, mm. and then eventually I was like, okay, I need to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in my own skin now after I, after I hit 30, that I started going back to Van to just mm. like my real name. And, and then I realized, you know, there's, there's beauty in, in the name. Uh, and so I, I appreciate it now where it, it means cloud. Mm -hmm. And then my middle names means autumn. So I'm autumn cloud in the autumn, I guess, but <laughs> the autumn clouds, autumn rain. cloud. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, you know, what? it's a good name. Um, and, and so I, I started grabbing all my domains. I'm like, okay, I better grab van two win.com and van dash two dash win.com. <laughs> <laughs> And all the emails you bet you like I had Outlook, Bantu went out uh, Outlook.com. Then I grabbed yeah. a Gmail account. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, man, what am I gonna use for social media? And you know, my last name was so hard to spell that I ended up with Van Revival mm -hmm. instead. And it was because people know me for my resilience and reinvention. And I think those two skills are so important in both your business and your personal life, where yeah, you constantly have to, yeah, you have to adapt. And like you said, there's so many challenges in business and that's where the resilient building resilience is so important to help keep you in the game. So you don't give up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. Wow. This, this is, this has really been inspirational and eye opening because you've gone through the journey and a lot of, a lot of the people in the entrepreneur world are also going through a similar journey, not knowing who to turn to who to talk to. And that's where these group are being part of other groups that has entrepreneurs helps so much, mm -hmm. you know, escape our own fog. Yeah. Aren't you in a mastermind group or something? I remember. I'm in, I'm in several yeah. mastermind groups yeah, because so <laughs> to keep me, keep me, keep my ship straight, keep my, you know, goals in view because that's the only way to move forward because you have support, you have your own cheerleaders and that's when we realized that all of these people are rooting for me. So there's no reason for me to not do it. You know, yes, yeah. it might be hard, but they're rooting for me. And you got to put in the work no matter what, no matter where you go, you got to put in the work. So why not in myself? Mm -hmm. Good for you so for investing in yourself. I, I, I definitely think coaching and mastermind groups are so important. Uh, I used to be a community manager for one of the leading uh, mastermind groups for COOs, and nice. they were mainly at companies generating revenue between five million and billions of dollars. So yeah. their biggest struggle was keeping up with the growth and scaling 
and not burning out <laughs> as they're mm. super stressed out about maintaining the quality <laughs> of their business. They're like, it's growing too fast. They're like, it's yeah. a good problem to have, but at the yeah. same time, it, it's very stressful. Yeah. And so I, I definitely see the the value in receiving uh, and as well as being the coach to other people. Yeah, I, I've had, I have my own leadership coach as well. His name is Jim Lee over at Bespoke and, and yeah, they work with all the American Asian leaders in the corporate companies. And that's been really, uh, he's been very helpful in, in helping me see my, um, my weak areas and what I needed to work on to yeah. elevate different voices, depending on the situation or working on the things I don't want to work on. Sure. <laughs> He keeps me accountable. Yeah, yeah. So I, I also joined a group as well. Um, it's the National nice. Asian American Association of Professionals and uh, currently volunteering to help them grow their community uh, at the moment and 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 level up their brand. So nice. Yeah. I'm going to have to jump in because I'm also Asian American. Yeah. No, you, you know? love the group. I became such good friends with a lot of the people on the board mm -hmm. as well as the members. I got invited to um, the treasurer's wedding and so was a lot of the other members. <laughs> we just was, ended up becoming really close friends. I think because nice. when you bond and understand each other's struggle and you're yes. able to be vulnerable with one another, you kind of connect on a whole different level than yeah. if you, yeah. I agree. So. Wow, man. So thank you so much. It's been very inspiring, very eye-opening, very, you know, fill, filled with wisdom and and takeaways within that journey let's take a quick break and when we get back van's going to share three hacks to take away so you can implement in your life immediately hey guys we're back welcome and we're back <laughs> thanks for sticking around we've been speaking with van Nguyen, and she's amazing it's just isn't she just amazing <laughs> please reach out right if you have any comments on how you feel about the story so far, you know, drop a comment in. I don't even know where you would send the comment in, but on the blog post, on the on the show notes, you can leave a message there. And of course, uh, we'll find ways how to reach out to Van Nguyen as well. So Van, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to All rumble. Right. Let's do it. Three, <laughs> share, share the three hacks to take away so that our, our audience can apply that in their lives. Okay, sure. I would say get clear on your vision, you know, find out where you see yourself in three years from now and be as descriptive as possible and then reverse engineer it with action steps and move forward with Kaizen, uh, meaning like eliminate anything that's unnecessary. You don't need to simplify your life in the process and then add, you know, uh, one new thing each week if that helps you move forward and uh, creating a habit out of it. I would mm -hmm. say if you are not sure on where to start, Cameron Harold has an amazing book called Vivid Vision to help you create a vivid vision for the next three years of your company that gets used uh, internally as well as all the vendors that you end up working with. That way, anybody you bring on is in alignment with your vision. I love that. Three hacks, right? So <laughs> number two, I would say, uh, figure out why you want a brand. If you're building a personal brand versus a business brand, you know, a unique skills definitely represents a lot of benefits and recognizing what you can offer and being able to leverage that will help you achieve your goals much faster than if you were a commodity, which makes you very replaceable. People can easily come in and, and duplicate what you already have. But mm -hmm. if you can find something that makes you unique, that makes you you and be authentic to yourself, then you'll create a, a long lasting sustainable brand and reputation for yourself. Third thing I would say you know, do an internal evaluation of figure out like, what are your hard skills? What are your soft skills? Mm. What, if you need to ask the people around you, what, when they think of you, what do they think of? Or, or how do you, what kind of impression you give off or what are you, what do they know you for that will help then you get a realistic picture of where you're currently at and then look at where you actually want to be and then fill in those gaps. So if you need to educate yourself or build on those skills to get to where you want to be. I would say work on becoming your future self. There's a great book on that too. It's called be your future self now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Essentially, yeah. however you want to be in the future, you, your actions should reflect that today. Yeah. Nice. So I would say that that would be my three, three hacks. I love it. I'm going to be sure to include the links to these books into the show notes so you can quickly get to them 
and absorb the information because guess what? The information is already out there. All we got to do is implement it in our lives and absorb it. And, and the more that we learn from others who have experienced, like for example, Van here was able to turn around her business in 24 hours because she worked with people over 100, 100 years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> call that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, it's it's so powerful when you are on top of sh like they literally say we're standing on shoulders of giants because they've paved the path for us. Nobody wants to take the dirt road. We want to mm -hmm. go on the paved road, right? It's smooth and uh, very free. And, you know, they've already figured out a problem. But entrepreneurs like us, we like to take the dirt roads because we want to figure out how things work. And that's where you need to be part of other entrepreneurs' journeys by joining spaces like SBI Pro's community or Van mentioned earlier how she's part of a community of Asian entrepreneurs. I think, how, how do you, uh, what's the, what's your name? I guess our acronym is NAP, A-A-P, uh, in the Los Angeles. There's different chapters throughout the U.S. I'm in the Los Angeles chapter, but it stands for National Asian American Associations professionals. <laughs> I know it's really long, um, but I didn't come up with a name, so don't don't blame yeah, me for yeah, that. Yeah, of uh, but I, I do want to give away something to your guests if if you'd like for uh, if I can share. Absolutely, that. you can share. Yeah, yeah, I would love for three of your guests to get selected to for a free digital identity workshop with me, and I'll do an assessment of their LinkedIn profile, and they'll receive a free digital business card. I have one by Popple. I really like using them. They have a QR code in the back, so whenever mm. you're out networking you can send over your digital business card without having to print. Uh, and this is what it looks like for the, the non-branded ones. So that's nice. what your, your guests would get, uh, your audience would get. And yeah, that can help them set up their, uh, their LinkedIn, uh, or I'm sorry, the digital business card. So they can make a great first impression when they first go out and meet people. And uh, I'll it. set up a landing page for, for your audience. So it'll be envisionarystudio.com forward slash hacks and hobbies. I love it. Thank you so much for, offering that gift to the audience here. And I love my digital business card because whenever I show up and the people are like, oh, let me get your contact. I'll just bust out my Popple card and like, hey, let me just tap it on your phone. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? How does it getting this information? <laughs> it's yeah, really cool. it's great. I love it. It's efficient. I can use my app if I don't have the card on me either. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. All right, let's jump into the sixth question I like to ask All my right. guests. Okay. Number one, what is the one hobby that you wish you got into? Kendo, the way of the sword. The Japanese, uh, it's Ooh. Japanese sword fighting. <laughs> yes, uh. <laughs> finally, sword fighting. My good friend, uh, Fuad Kamal, he's a cyclist, uh, bicyclist. He loves playing around with his katana as well. That's amazing. I love, I want a katana. Uh, I just think there's so much discipline mm -hmm. with that. And just, I don't know, there's a lot of mental and physical stuff that goes into to kendo. And, and yeah. I don't know, I just think it's really badass. <laughs> I want to be like a samurai, you know? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, that yeah. reminds me of uh, the, the movie by Tom Cruise, <laughs> The Way of yeah. the Samurai. Oh, yes. Right, that I was an amazing that. movie. And Tom Cruise is doing some amazing work. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I went with my wife to watch Top Gun Maverick. And oh my gosh. before the movie, we got to see the sneak peek into Mission Impossible 8. Apparently, yeah. this is the eighth movie of Mission Impossible. I, I had lost count. I didn't count, right? But I'm super excited. <laughs> it's coming next summer. Tom Cruise is kicking Ew. some. Wow. Yeah, he's making a big comeback. I oh, love yeah, the is. Maverick. I, love I didn't think guy. I was going to like it that much because mm -hmm. I don't remember the first one. So okay. I, I didn't watch rewatch it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But the second one was amazing. I watched it in theaters and I'm like, wow. Yeah, it was really good. I'm glad I watched it. Yeah. Our next question. Okay. What did you want to be when you were a child? Librarian. <laughs> I I love books. I was such a bookworm. I won. That's I was, right. I, you are yeah. a bookworm. Mm -hmm. I won second place in a reading contest in sixth grade for reading the most books in a, wow. in, a in a semester. And then um, I or a month. I can't remember. I think it was a month. And then I I I was also the fastest reader in my mm -hmm. English class in uh, in ninth grade. So I when there was the substitute teacher, she would have us read 
the book out loud. And mm -hmm. if we finish the book early, we got to leave early. So everyone volunteered me to read out loud. But then they, <laughs> they, they blamed me the next day because we'd have a pop quiz. And I'm like, man, you read so fast. We couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't, couldn't grasp remember. what you were reading. <laughs> but uh, I was in a reading reading program because they thought I, I was uh, falling behind because I couldn't pronounce baloney. I'd say blogna or George. I would say gorge. <laughs> And so they're like, okay, she needs help with her reading. And then next thing you know, they're like, okay, she doesn't need help with her she reading. <laughs> She's killing it. I yeah, it. I'd read like, uh, I think 12 books by noon on Saturday morning as a kid, because I was so nerdy. I, I just love okay. books. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I so, sucked yeah. at reading. I was really slow. I'm still a little slow reader. But, uh, you know, my son, he finished all Harry Potter novels in within... <gasps> Within a few weeks. Wow. Like he just read them, you know, page to page. And he was, he was in which grade? Fifth grade. That's great. But now yeah, that he has great. an iPhone, he doesn't mm -hmm. read as much. Oh, well, <laughs> that will do it. Well, uh -huh. now the iPhones can scan the page and read it for you. That's right. That's so right. So there's an app Speechify for that. Speechify app. Yep. Yeah. Or, oh yeah, Speechify. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or like you, you can speed read. My friend taught me how to speed read. So you would just take a roller and then just kind of like go row by row i've been wanting to learn yeah. how to speed read i even have a course on it for you on udemy but i just never ah, got around to yeah it's mm -hmm. it's basically just taking a roller and going row by row and you don't stop you keep going so even if you feel like oh i didn't comprehend that no no no, you keep going just keep going oh. just keep going and and your brain will like grasp the most important parts of that page oh, and then you move that. on rather than trying to read like every single word you just mm -hmm. get the the main points yeah i mean just and then if wow. there's anything you don't get you can always go back and reread it but the right, first time around you just keep going just, and that just keeps counting yeah you can do like a minute a page or something i don't know i think <laughs> 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 i think that's how fast but yeah i, I, I learned i learned how to, to uh speed write speed read and um i talk really fast too so it's yeah I have so to, like, you're, you're a speed down. demon right here adhd uh, are you are you driving <laughs> fast too man <laughs> To not anymore. All right, good. People used to feel like they were at Six Flags in my car, but I decided <laughs> I need to drive safely, so I don't good. I don't speed anymore. But yeah, good, good. Yeah. Our next question: We got four more. Okay. What is your favorite movie or TV show? Favorite movie? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I don't really have a favorite. I really right now I love Chinese films, <laughs> mainland China, and uh -huh. it's all in subtitles uh i think it was called eternal love i watched it three times and oh it's like 50 episodes long or something yeah so it was, it was not short but i loved it so much because it's like basically a love through three lifetimes wow. and i'm such a hopeless romantic that <laughs> i'm like man if only this is what love really is in real life. <laughs> so i i immerse myself in a lot of these romantic um shows and friends Friends. friends i've seen every single episode of friends yeah all right all right perfect next question what movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it Ooh, alias Ooh, <laughs> alias that was a good show yes. that was such a good show oh I my god i love it because i can reinvent myself in every episode <laughs> that's right <laughs> but you know what's interesting is that you didn't pick kill bill because you know well, that was scary <laughs> yeah that seems dangerous but I she's she's working it. she's she's a samurai she's working that with is swords true. so i was like eh, i don't know uh, it's, she is yeah that's pretty could be, could pretty be cool. a coin flip <laughs> <laughs> but all that killing i'm like no yeah yeah not, i think, I think you're, yeah not the war yeah okay. maybe <laughs> maybe like you're slicing sword. maybe you're slicing fruits like fruit ninja okay oh How's my that? gosh there you go. I, there you go. That's a good one. I do want to do sim, sim, uh, simulation. simulation. Yeah, some simulation yeah. shooting. So that's something I'm going to get into pretty soon. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Two more questions. Okay. Who is your favorite superhero? Favorite superhero. Hmm. Uh, my favorite superhero. Does it have to be a superhero or can it be a villain? <laughs> I mean, they have, they, have a hero, they have a superpower, right? <laughs> Hmm. I would say, you know, what? I think I like Mystique a mm. lot. She's such a chameleon. Yeah. Uh, and I'm kind of like that. Like in, in school, people called me a chameleon because I could fit into different groups all the time and just adapt to them. So I think like she's probably the best hero for me. Yeah. I like that. And she did. She played a really awesome role, especially in the in the 
the first class or the the reinvention. I can't remember. Oh yes, first where, class. Where um, what's her name played that role? I can't remember the actress's name. Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, Jennifer Lawrence. She yes. she played a really nice role. Um, mm -hmm. That was awesome. All right, last question. Okay. If you were a board game, what would it be? <gasps> Life. Life. Yes. Two lifers. Life. <laughs> I, <love> <laughs> I grew up playing that and I love it. So I never get bored of life. Yeah. Nice. Yes. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Awesome. Well, Van, thank you so much for your time and sharing your journey and sharing your wisdom with us and, and even offering a free gift to three of the audience members that are interested in rebranding themselves and, you know, getting your help with that. So thank you so much. Where can these superpreneurs find you? Uh, they can find me at vanrevival.com and all of my social media pages are there and they can also contact me through the contact form on there or van at revivalu.com or okay. in Visionary Studio. <laughs> <laughs> if they're well, looking guys, for marketing and branding. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You got you have multiple options in ways to connect with Van. And if those are too hard for you, let you know, reach out to me <laughs> and I will get you connected with Van. <laughs> VanRevival.com is probably the easiest. So everything right, will be on there. Yeah. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much again, Van. We will talk to you very soon. Have an amazing day. You too. All right, Janine. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today.